Hello, welcome to uh, the second part of my spotlight on Don Heck. So why do I have this book? Don Heck did not uh, work on this book, but before I show you the inside of this book. Often when I spotlight other authors, you have heard me say that they are their own best inkers. If there was sufficient time for them to do their own inking, from Walt Simonson to Bill Sinkovich, uh, many of the great authors often are their own best inkers. Often it's hard for an inker to translate properly uh, what was drawn, with exception of somebody say like Tom Palmer, the inker. You know, he can ink anybody and make just about everybody look better. Here's an example of when you don't have the right anchor, this is what can happen. This book has Gene Colon, and for those that follow my spotlight video, I love Gene Colon. But here's what happens when you don't have the right anchor, okay? You have Dick Ayers. And if you, I will flip through this book as quick as I can. Just to show you the interior. If Gene Colon went through his career with Dick Ayer as an inker, I don't think he would get as much love and affection as he gotten. Based on what you know, I can tell. Just flipping through many of the early works with uh, Dick Ayers and Gene Cole, as you can see. Some inkers just does not work well with a particular pencil, and as you can see, for those that are familiar with Gene Cole's work, I think you would agree with me that this is definitely not one of his better book but I think it's had more to do with having the wrong inkers than Gene Colon himself okay let's go through a few more pages just look at this inking is you know an art that is often not give enough credits to how beautiful the final result is because having the wrong inker with the wrong artist with any artist if you don't match up the right inkers the end result can be not so great or bad okay okay so hopefully what I said makes sense one of the biggest problem that Marvel had in my opinion with um, Don Heck is over the years they just can't seem to match him up with the right anchors to make his work stand out and that's I think is the biggest shame biggest shame of this whole thing about Don Heck he was sufficient of an artist he did a lot of work drew a lot of books but in the end his style was never matched up with the right anchor for the most part um, and for sure he was not the person to ink his own work he needed the extra help he had a very um, unique kind of scratchy style not as in Nick Crawley or Joe Kubert scratchy but let me show you what I'm talking about okay um, to show uh, how Don Heck was uh, not his own best anchors. Let's take a look at some example. Okay, and here is an old tale of suspense uh, in black and white, which is the best way to see the penciling and the inking. As you can see, Don Heck style has a lot of unnecessary scratchy line like this. Just look at where Iron Man Blake is. Don Heck is definitely not 
good at drawing muscular figures. Okay, he was you know, in the early Silver Age and Golden Age. He was more into drawing the detective slash romance or western. So he's I think he's very good at drawing regular people with regular clothing. But when it comes down to his drawing uh, muscular figures, he definitely had a hard time, especially in the beginning, as in this uh, splash page with Iron Man. And as you can see, when he ate his own penciling, there's a lot of unnecessary scratches on the edge of the legs and everywhere. You know, I don't like that either. I don't like this part right here everywhere. It's just, there's no need for... It, it doesn't add to the depth of the pictures. It doesn't add dimension to the pictures. And I think that's where he needed the most help was someone to clean up all these little lines everywhere. Uh, it's the way he penciled, maybe. But it's just because it's that's the way he penciled. It does not mean that it translates well with ink, okay? So, let's, so luckily and unfortunately, in his early days with the Avengers, he was teamed up with Wally Wood on a couple issues. And let me show you. Look at this, night and day. See, when he's teamed up with Wally Wood, just look at how different the figures look. Clean lines, okay? Very clean. Look at that. It looked great. There's no complaint here, right? Beautiful. The lines are in the right place where it's needed, not everywhere. Let's take a look at another picture. Here we go. Just look at this. Great looking page with Wally Wood as an anchor. You know, it's a shame that Marvel didn't team him up with some regular anchor on a consistent basis. You know, when you're talking about um, Gene Colan having Sid Shaw working with him on a, the bulk of his run. Uh, with uh, Daredevil, it's beautiful result, but for the most part, Don Heck was teamed up with the wrong anchors. For the most part, we wish it was Wally Wood for heavy issues. Okay. Okay, so those two page of black and white original art I show you with Wally Wood as an anchor. That was issue 20 and 22 of the Avengers. So here in issue 23, here's my copy, pretty nice copy. Um, he was teamed up with the young John Romita. This is something like six or eight months before John Romita drew Spider-Man 39. So before, this is I think his second one of his earliest, maybe not second, but one of his earliest assignment when he came over to Marvel after doing a lot of the romance book over at DC. So you have John Romita inking Don Heck. And once again, beautiful result. Okay? Clean up. John Romita is extremely talented. He's definitely one of the few artists that when I highlight and spotlight him, it will be both as an artist and an inker as well because he can ink just about everybody or anybody. As you can see, he make Don Heck art look pretty darn good, right? That's what Don Heck needed. He needed an inker that can clean up the lines.
try not to go too fast I just want uh, to be able to show you the art as much as possible if Don Heck had an anchor similar to this throughout his career at Marvel I think a lot of fan would talk about him much more pleasing because you know I, I think the art in this book or in issue 20 or 22 are really good um, as good as you know some of his best work in my opinion just look at that that is great big kudos to John Romita to clean up the work right but that's what he needed that's what Don Heck needed. So as you can see, it's nothing wrong there. Okay? It's nothing to complain about. A lot of his work, Don Heck Inc. himself. And I think that's where the result hurt the most. You know, even other inkers beside Wally Wood or John Romita. The result was decent. Frank did a few books with him also. I can't pronounce the last name, so I try not to butcher that last name. But Frank didn't do a great job as um, John Romita did with this book. It's beautiful. See, by this point of his career, I think he finally got the hang of drawing muscular superheroes. The first few issues of the Avengers, I think he was lacking, as well as his work in uh, other titles. The early superheroes that Don Heck did was fairly weak at his early stage of drawing muscular characters. But once he got the hang of it, I think he did a very good job. In fact, if I was to compare this book with the early John Bushima work, it is just as good, if not better, in my opinion. Uh, when I do a spotlight on John Bushima, I definitely will bring out his earliest work with Marvel, and you can see for yourself. But there you go. So there you go for this book. Let's try not to spend too much time. So here is Avengers 34. A beautiful copy. I love this book. Gorgeous, razor sharp, black cover, dark covers, and Don Heck did everything in this book as far as penciling and inking, and it shows. Okay, here we go. You have it, the very. That's his. You know, to me, that's his always been his weakness. Is he add a lot of unnecessary little lines. For some artists, the scratchy type work better, as in Nick Cardi or Joe Kubert. But something about Don Heck, scratchy style that just didn't do, uh, didn't work for many people, me included. Just look at this. See, this little line right here by the cheek, by the nose, it's not needed. Right there again, like I said, everything can be cleaned up and streamlined and rounded instead of seeing so many little lines everywhere. And you know, if you compare this to the previous book where John Romita cleaned up every line and round up the figures, it looked much sharper and cleaner and nicer, right? There's nothing wrong with Don Heck as far as uh, his panel layout, storytelling. It is quite good. It's sufficient. You 
can see right here another perfect example of an action pose that have all kind of extra lines small lines that could have been cleaned up and look a lot better okay so hopefully um, this video illustrate uh, you know Don Heck skills and show that you know he could have been uh, team up with a better anchor to make his art look a lot better and I think that's you know it's too bad that uh, over the years Marvel uh, at the time maybe Stan Lee thought this looked great you know like I said we do not know I don't know why Don Hecht was not team up with the proper anchor 